Hello everyone, I'm Ben with the BTC Sessions. I'm here in Calgary, Canada, and today I'm gonna to be taking a look at the Trezor Model T, which is a hardware wallet to store and secure your Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Now, I'm gonna be doing this in more of a how-to style uh, that is geared towards new users that have perhaps never used a hardware wallet. So for some of you that already know what's up, you will find some redundant pieces of information here, but hopefully you can pull from this what you need. Let's take a look. So the first order of business here is the package. What's it look like? Well, I've had mine for a little bit, so the edges are a little bit banged up, so don't hold that against me. Uh, but the packaging is very nice here. Um, you have a little slide off box. Uh, inside, you have this little magnetic opener at the bottom and you swing it open and the Trezor itself is here. It actually has this cool little dock where you can, it's just magnetic, it'll just stick there. Um, and then beyond that, you have a little box that has three things in it. It has your USB cable, um, a user manual, and your recovery seed card, which we'll get into in a minute. Um, and actually, Mine happen to have some bonus stickers as well. So you get your USB, so it's USB-C for the actual device and then a regular USB uh, on the other end here. Uh, and then you've got your recovery seed. You actually get three of these, so uh, it just allows you to write down your 12 word recovery phrase so that if you lose or damage the device um, or if it gets wiped by accident, you can then plug in that 12 word phrase and recover your funds. So those are important. Um, a little user manual as well as some stickers. And that is it for packaging. One other quick note here, there is a slot for a micro SD card here. Now there's no function of using that yet, but eventually you'll be able to make an encrypted backup of this device using an SD card inserted in the side. Now, as I said, as I'm making this video, it's still in beta. Um, and if that's making your eyes gloss over and you don't understand anything I just said, don't worry about it. But there is a point to this slot here. Uh, you will be able to utilize micro SD at some point in the future, and I'm sure I'll cover that in another video. So I wanted to start here on the Trezor homepage, um, and the only reason I'm stopping here quickly is to just show you uh, the variety of coins that are supported on this device. So uh, on their homepage here, uh, safe place for your coins. Um, they support hundreds of different cryptocurrencies. So obviously Bitcoin, but it, you can go through depending on the device. We're dealing with the Trezor Model T here and it details every single coin that they support. A lot of these obviously are um, ERC20 tokens, which is any sort of coin that uh, is built on top of Ethereum. Uh, those are easy to add on because they all are basically the same uh, basically the same to deal with it's super easy to implement um, but you can see that uh, for the Trezor Model T it has a ton of different coins uh, for the regular Trezor one um, those other ones are still in the works so all of these ERC20 tokens are still soon to be coming whereas they're already implemented on the Model T but beyond that let's get into basic setup now there are two things that you're going to need to do before you can actually really get into using your Trezor. Uh, number one is you're going to need to download something called Trezor Bridge. And so I just want to show you something. Now this is the regular uh, URL that you would go to to use your Trezor. It's wallet.trezor.io. And if it's your first time visiting this site, you're gonna see instead of this thing saying connect Trezor to continue, you're gonna see a little button that says download Trezor Bridge. And this is just a program that allows you to uh, actually communicate between your browser and your Trezor itself. So it's a quick button you click, it downloads a program and you hit install and that's it, okay? But uh, what you're going to be doing after that is you're going to be going to trezor.io slash start. And this is where you're going to get started with everything um, once you have Bridge installed. So it asks you to select your device. 
I'm gonna be selecting the Model T, which is, at the time of this video, it's taking me to the beta wallet setup. So it has more features, but not all of them are perfect yet, so I might encounter uh, the odd thing that doesn't work perfectly, um, but I'm okay with that. I'm not worried about losing funds through this. Um, they're just adding more features. So I'm gonna click Trezor Model T, and that takes me to, remember the other website was wallet.trezor.io. This one is beta-wallet.trezor.io. So just slightly different. Now I've already installed the bridge, so it just tells me to connect my Trezor to continue. Now, this is where one thing will also differ for you guys here. Now this wallet, this Trezor, has already been used once. I've since wiped it to kind of start as fresh as I can, but when these things ship, they actually don't have any firmware installed on them. So it's just kind of like an empty shell. And so the first time you plug it in, it's gonna ask you and say that you need to install the firmware from the Trezor website. Um, and so again, you just follow the prompts on the device. It asks you if you want to install the firmware. And then once it's all done, all you have to do is unplug it and plug it back in again and you'll get to this screen. So pretty much it just asks you to install something on the device, but it's really easy. You just follow the prompt. Unfortunately, I can't completely uninstall the firmware to show you that step once it's been done. Uh, but let's continue on this site and see what is next. So I would like to create a new wallet. We're going to start from scratch. So I'm going to hit create new. Now on the device, it says needs backup. Okay, so this is gonna be a major part of setting up your Trezor wallet. A backup is key. So it says your Trezor is ready, but first let's get familiar with the various features of the wallet. So this is just a general information screen. I'm gonna hit continue to wallet. Now it says your Trezor is not backed up. Protect your coins from the unexpected start now. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do this because this is very important. Um, what I want you to do is think of your Trezor as the key to your account. And right now, because I haven't done a backup, this key here is the only copy of that key. And it would be impossible for somebody to guess and duplicate this key and access my account. Which means if I lost this device right now and it had funds on it, well, I would be out of luck. There is no way I would ever be able to duplicate this key. So I might wanna make a second key. I wanna make a backup of this key. So that's what this is. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna hit create backup in three minutes. And this is where it's going to give me my recovery seed. This is a series of 12 words that I'm going to write down and store. Now, you don't wanna take pictures of this, you don't wanna share it with anybody, um, you don't wanna write it on a file in your computer, you definitely don't wanna put it on cloud storage. The reason is if anybody gets a hold of this, they have a copy of the key to your account. You do not want that. So please write it on those little cards that they gave you. I don't have them in front of me, but, oh, wait, I do. Okay, your personal recovery seed, and on the other side of this, you have 12 slots to write in your words. So use those resources, write them down, and then keep them in a safe place, okay? So I'm gonna say I understand and I agree this warning. Continue. And then on my device, it actually shows me my, uh, first it says <laughs> never make a digital copy of your recovery. So it's warning me once again, I'm gonna hit I understand. And now it's going to give me my list. So it gives me the first four words and I'm just gonna write them down. And then I can swipe to get to the next ones. And I can see word five through eight here. Once I have written all of these down, I'm just gonna hold on the touch screen, hold to confirm. Goes around the circle and we're set. So here it wants me to start typing in the words that I have written down. Not all of them, just some of them. So this works a little bit like <laughs> old school text messaging when it was just flip phones and you had to kind of hit the button multiple times to get to a certain letter. So I'm gonna type the word detail, okay? so. That was the second word I wrote down, so I'm gonna go D. 
All right, and now to get to the second letter, I hit it twice <laughs> to get to the E. Then I need a T, so hit this button twice. And it auto fills it, so it's not gonna be a huge pain to get through this. If I want that word, I simply tap it. Now it's asking me to type the seventh word and tap it once more. Awesome. And that's all I need to do. I need to confirm two words. And now on my screen, I can say, I can see it says, you have successfully backed up your device. Okay, so I'm gonna hit continue and move on. If you have different Trezor devices, you might wanna label them differently so you know which one you're dealing with. I'm just gonna name it for fun because why not? So we're gonna hit continue. And I'm going to name this BT, BTC Sessions Test. Oh, I can't have that many. <laughs> Let's just lose a space here. Test. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to confirm to continue. And now on my device itself, it says, do you really want to change the label to BTC Sessions Test? Yes, I do. I'm going to hit the green check. All right. <laughs> Apparently, I chose a wonderful name. Let's continue on. Okay, set up the pin lock, okay? So we're gonna choose a pin um, so that, let's say you lost this device and somebody knew what it was, they wanted to plug it in and access your funds. Well, if you have a pin number, they get, I believe it's three tries before the device will wipe itself, okay? So we're gonna set up a pin because we definitely want that added security. So I'm gonna hit the green check and I'm gonna enter a new pin. Now you'll notice these numbers are not in any sort of order. In fact, it scrambles them every single time um, so that an attacker who's trying to figure out your pin number wouldn't be able to see what you are doing. So for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna have a very simple password. We're just gonna go with one, two, three, four. One, two, three, Four. And I'll hit the green check. And it asked me to enter it one more time. One, two, three, four, and check. And there we go. Good job, your pin is set. I will hit continue on the screen here. And now, stay updated with our newsletter. We'll send you only important messages, blah, blah, blah. Now, um, I don't like getting a ton of emails. So I'm actually going to skip this step. And I already follow them on Twitter. Uh, and I'm not a huge user of Medium. So I'm going to hit continue. And there we go. My treasure is all set and I'm going to hit finish. And now we are all set up. The treasure is set. I've named my account and I've written down my backup. I am good to go and ready to do transactions. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna take a look through the user interface and what's in front of you. So what you're gonna see up in the top left is the coin that you are currently dealing with as well as a little drop-down menu. When you hit this drop-down menu, it gives you every other coin that you can currently deal with with this device. Now, you may be looking at this list going, but Ben, I thought you said they had hundreds of coins you could deal with. Well, I was also mentioning that uh, a lot of those were ERC20 tokens, which is coins built on top of the Ethereum network. The Ethereum network. Um, now, whenever you use ERC20 tokens, it actually ports you over to an external site called myetherwallet.com. I have done a video on myetherwallet.com and how to use it with other hardware wallets, but the process is much the same as with a Trezor and any other wallet. So I will link to that video down below if you want to see how to use ERC20 tokens and things like Ethereum. Um, but for the purposes of this video, I am not going to be covering that because that is a whole other ball game and it takes a lot of explaining. So please check out that video if you're curious. Anyways, uh, here is the name of my device. You, I can see it on screen whenever it's plugged in and I've logged in. If I eject it, then it'll take me out of this screen. 
Down below, I also see my account. It gives me how much of that particular coin I have and the US dollar value right there. I can also add additional accounts, um, but not until I've had at least a single transaction in my first account, okay? Um, I can also add a legacy account. Now, if you're unfamiliar, Bitcoin has something called SegWit. Uh, it essentially condenses transactions in a certain way that cuts down on fees. However, if you, for some reason, want to use the old addresses, which start with a one, you can do that here by hitting add legacy account. Now, beyond this, app settings. Let's just take a look at what we have. You can change your local currency. This is something uh, I would like to do. However, right now they only have a single option. Obviously, if they have this option here, it is something that's being worked on and maybe by the time you see this video, that will be changed and there will be other uh, device, or sorry, other currencies available here. But for now, US dollars only. Now, some of this may not be of interest to some of you. So this is just selecting, uh, I guess, where your Trezor wallet is pulling its information from um, and how it functions. Now, uh, again, not a lot of options here currently. As I said, this is in beta and this seems to be something that they're building out right now. The only thing that I see different from just pulling information from the Trezor wallet uh, is Dash. You can go to dash.org or Litecoin, litecore.io. Um, but I'm gonna leave everything as is. Uh, Bitcore server, again, you're getting into some technical stuff here. Um, not anything that I want to make changes to right now. Now, enable labeling. Let's take a look at this. It lets you link your Dropbox account to your Trezor um, and rename accounts, add comments to transactions, label addresses, um, so on and so forth, so that you can then search for particular transactions. Um, again, I'm not looking to connect to my Dropbox right now, but that is an option for you as well. Um, and below that, tips, support center, all the typical support that you would expect. Now, the important stuff really is here. Your list of previous transactions, there's none yet, there will be soon. You have your receive screen, which shows the beginning of an address, um, and I can add more addresses below. So. With your wallet, um, you can have more than a single address, okay? So you can send to multiple different addresses all under your control for any coin that you are holding. Um, if I hit show full address, what it's gonna do is then show me the full address not only on my computer, but on my device itself. And what this does is it actually allows me to check to see if what I'm seeing on my computer is truthful because the device is what's actually holding these accounts. And if on my computer it's different, it could mean that my computer is compromised and somebody's trying to insert a different address for them to receive their money to. So um, this is just an extra security matter. Uh, extra security measure to ensure what you're looking at is true. Now, if on the device I hit this button that says QR, it'll bring up a QR code, which I can then scan with a mobile wallet on my phone. Or I can go back to the address. I can also hit the check mark, and that then allows me to see the QR code on my computer itself. And again, if I wish to scan with a mobile wallet. Now let's head over to the send screen. The send screen has a couple different things. You can paste in an address, so I could copy and paste an address from anywhere, from a desktop wallet or from an email or whatever, um, or I can scan a QR code. So if I open up the QR code scanner, first it asks if I'm gonna allow my camera to open, sure. And when it does, there's me. So I could scan a QR code using my webcam. Now I can also put in an amount that I want to send either in Bitcoin or in US dollars or whatever coin I happen to be dealing with. So if I type in a US dollar amount, it'll auto convert to the amount in Bitcoin or if I type in a Bitcoin amount, it'll auto convert to the US dollar amount so I know what I'm sending. I also can set my fee. So 
This will be auto calculated based on how busy the network is. It is calculated in Satoshis per byte. A Satoshi is the lowest denomination of Bitcoin that there is, which is the eighth decimal place. So um, right now, if I want to send a super cheap transaction and I don't care if it takes a little bit longer, I would send one Satoshi per byte. If I wanted to get through relatively quickly, two Satoshis per byte. And if I wanted to get uh, through really, really fast, guaranteed that it's going to be done in um, for around 10 minutes or less, then I would send five Satoshis per byte. Um, fees on the network have been pretty low lately, um, but keep in mind, Satoshis per byte, it depends on the type of transaction, the amount of data being sent is how your pricing model works. Most transactions are 200 and something bytes and the value of a single Satoshi in dollars and cents can vary quite a bit. But as it stands right now, these kind of prices, you'll be spending a few cents, but we'll see that when we do an actual transaction. Uh, and beyond this, we also have a sign and verify screen. Uh, this is more so to prove that you are you online. So proving that you have access to the keys that are on this device. You can write uh, a specific message and more or less verify that it is you and send it to a particular address. Um, you can also verify that you did write something uh, at a later date. So you can put in a message, an address, and a signature and verify that it is you. Um, so yeah, again, not something that I use often, but that option is there. So let's get into some transactions. Now for today's video, I'm going to be using a desktop wallet by the name of Exodus to send and receive uh, transactions in and out of this Trezor. Okay, so I'm just gonna open up that program here. Uh, I've got some Bitcoin sitting in it and that's what we're gonna be dealing with today. So I'll just head over to my Bitcoin wallet here and we'll just leave that there. We'll head back to the Trezor screen. So. I want to receive some Bitcoin. So I'm gonna to go to my receive screen. Very simply, I'm going to uh, hit show full address. And I'm going to verify that address on the device itself. I usually just look at the first few digits, 33RP, and the last few digits, KLD3, and cross verify between the two devices. It looks good to me. So I'm gonna hit the check mark here. And now I am free to go ahead and copy this address. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna copy that address. Now keep in mind again, if I had a mobile device, I could be scanning the QR code as well, but in this case, I need to actually just copy it. So I'm gonna go now back to my Exodus wallet and I'm gonna hit send and now I can paste in my address. If I had scanned from a mo mobile address, uh, sorry, from a mobile device, then this would auto populate into the recipient field, but not the case here. Okay, now I'm going to be sending over, let's say uh, zero point, what I wanna do, zero two. Bitcoin, so that's around $200 Canadian. I'm, I'm from Canada, so uh, the US dollar thing is is a little inconvenient for me, but that's okay. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna hit send, confirm, and off it goes. So let's go back to the Trezor, and we're gonna go to transactions. I can now see that I have a balance of 153 US dollars. So I didn't lose money there. Keep in mind, I didn't lose money. It's just the, the, the conversion from Canadian dollar value to US dollar value. But the amount of Bitcoin is the same, 0.02 BTC, the exact amount I sent over, okay? Uh, so this shows me a graph of transactions coming in uh, versus transactions going out. And this will be updated with every new transaction that happens.
All right. Um, I can also see any other transaction details here. If I click on details, it will take me over to BTC Explorer on their Trezor Insight website. And this gives me all kinds of details on my transaction. I can see that it was 224 bytes. That's the size, the amount of data that was sent. Um, it shows me the fee rate, but it's calculated different here. It's per kilobyte, not per byte. Um, it shows the time it was received and it's unconfirmed right now. So the Bitcoin network updates roughly every 10 minutes to include new transactions. So once that's confirmed, I should see a confirmation and it will be spendable. And I can see the amount of uh, the actual fee in Bitcoin that I spent on my transaction here. So we'll wait for that to confirm and then we'll come back and we'll try sending it a portion of it at least back out. So it's been a few minutes now and I have a confirmed transaction down below. Reason I know is it says three minutes ago and if I hover over that, it says that I have one confirmation. I can see when that was confirmed. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna send a transaction out. So we're just gonna go to the send screen. Now at this point, like I said, I could click on the QR code if I had a mobile device ready with the QR code to scan, but we are actually going to paste in an address. So I'm gonna go over uh, to my Exodus wallet that I had open, I'm gonna hit receive, and I'm gonna go ahead and copy this address. They actually have a quick copy button down below, so I'm just gonna tap that, and I've now copied my Bitcoin address. So I paste my receiving address into the field here. Now at this point, I want to select an amount that I would like to send over. Um, so I'm going to send back half of what I just received. So 0 0.01 Bitcoin. Now our fee here, we can do a drop down and we can choose and notice that this has changed since the last time we looked. So the high speed transaction is now six Satoshis per byte. So this will dynamically change based on network conditions. Um, it also gives me an expected time frame. Usually from my experience, um, they will overestimate this time frame so that if it gets through earlier, then you're a happy camper. It's always better to over, to to under promise and then over deliver, right? So um, this uh, for two satoshis per byte is a cost of around three cents. That's three U.S. cents. Um, if I were to go for the high, uh, it would be eight cents to send this. But um, I'm not in a huge rush, so I'm just going to go with the normal fee, and that works out to seventy-six sixty-four U.S. dollars that I'm sending over, which is 0 0.01 Bitcoin. If I had a second recipient, I could add a recipient here uh, and add a secondary amount. This is known as batching a transaction, which actually cuts down on your fees because you pay a single fee for that transaction instead of per recipient. So this is a good, another good way to cut down on fees. Now, I don't need to send to multiple people right now, uh, but if I did, I could paste in here or scan another QR code and select my amount. Anyways, I can just X out to get the single transaction I wanted. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna hit send, and this is where I'm gonna see my confirmation on my device. So it says, do you want to send 0 0.01 Bitcoin to the following address? If yes, you're gonna hit the green check, and then it says one more time, this is the amount being sent, including the fee. You're gonna hold it to confirm. So I hold, it goes around the circle, and my transaction has been sent. Now you can see on the transaction screen, uh, things have changed. So I can see that I, uh, it basically gives me a rundown of where I'm at. It shows how much I receive. So the green, I see a, an incoming transaction up top. I see an outgoing transaction down below, and it gives me the median of where I am at now with both transactions. And it does this day by day. So I can see, I can get a, a quick picture of my accounts here. Now, uh, let's go over to Exodus. 
and C, I can see that there is a pending transaction there that is incoming. So we are all set. We've now done a send, uh, sorry, a receive followed by a send. Now we're going to do one other thing here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to try uh, not only wiping this device, so restoring it back to uh, factory settings without any information on it, and then restoring our account again. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into, we're gonna actually tap on the device over on the left hand of the screen, and that gives us three different options here. So these are some further settings that you can go into. I can change the label of my device, I can change my pin, uh, I can show my extended public key, which I'm not gonna dive into what that is right now, especially for those of you that are beginners. Um, you don't necessarily need to know that at the moment. I can also pick my home screen, and there's a whole host of different home screens that you can have. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna wipe the device. So I'm gonna go to advanced. Now, advanced here, I want to go all the way down and there's a thing that says wipe device. So I'm gonna tap that. It's gonna say you need to confirm uh, all the data on your device will be deleted. This action cannot be undone. Never do this action with Trezor holding coins unless you have your recovery seed at hand, which we do, we wrote it down earlier. So on my device, I need to hold to confirm this action. So I'm gonna do that. And here we go. Your Trezor has been successfully wiped. Please disconnect it now. I pull out the cord and I get bumped back to this main screen that we had at the beginning. So right now, this device, even though there were still funds on it when I wiped it, if I plug this in again, I cannot access those funds. I need to have my recovery phrase. And we're gonna go do that now. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna plug in my device. Now, it is bumping us to the setup screen again, but this time we're gonna do something different. We're gonna hit recover wallet. We want our funds back. So um, we're gonna need our recovery seed, it's telling us. Um, so we're just gonna hit continue. Now, how many words is your recovery seed? So the one that you wrote down at the beginning, it was 12, so I'm gonna hit 12. And now I'm gonna start going through and typing all of the words, all 12 of them that I have. Now I know this is a bit of a pain, but this is also the cost of security and being your own bank. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in my first word, S-O-N, G for song, and I'm gonna do that all the way through for every single <laughs> word here. So on completion of putting in all your words, you won't see any special notifications. You're just gonna be bumped to this screen where it says your Trezor is ready, and you see the Trezor logo on the device itself. Um, it gives you the same information that we had before. I'm just gonna hit continue to wallet, and looky looky here. I have not only my funds still in the wallet, uh, but I still have my transaction history of everything that has happened with this particular wallet itself. Uh, so we've just recovered everything here. Um, now keep in mind that it is now labeled as my treasure because we've imported the account again, but the labels that you put on stuff are not retained, all right? So if I wanna name this back to BTC Sessions Test or something else, I can go ahead and do that. Um, you can see that, again, my progress is 40%. I have my backup and everything, but I can still name accounts and so on and so forth. Beyond this, like I said, if I want to deal with other coins, I simply hit the drop down. I can pick a coin like Litecoin, and it will simply bump me to the exact same screen, but with a different coin. So I can see, again, it still says my treasure, but I'm gonna have receive and send here, this time with Litecoin addresses instead. 
And one final thing I'd like to show you guys is uh, I was talking about dealing with Ethereum before and how it ports you to a separate site. Now I'm just going to show you what happens when you go to your Ethereum wallet here. Um, so if I hit the drop down and I choose Ethereum, it gives you an option. They actually utilize two sites. So um, my crypto split off from my Ether wallet before, uh, essentially just two of the developers went different ways and they each made their own website. But um, when you go to use Ethereum or Ethereum Classic, uh, you go to uh, my Ether wallet or my crypto. So if I click on my Ether wallet, uh, it's gonna take me to this website it's gonna ask me how would I like to access my wallet. I'm using a Trezor, so I click on that and I hit connect to Trezor. Now here it says, would you like to export your public key? Uh, if you're a newbie, don't panic about this. Just hit the export button, uh, even if it sounds confusing to you. And this can be a little intimidating as well, um, but it will auto select what you need here. So just choose the first one. You can see Trezor in here. Uh, and then you just pick an address. You can have multiple different addresses. Um, if you're unsure, just use the first one and then hit unlock your wallet. And this takes you to uh, a screen where you can then deal with Ethereum and Ethereum based tokens. Uh, uh, that is as far as I'm going to go with anything Ethereum related here. But if you're curious and you want to learn how this works, please check out my other video on my Ether wallet. It is very thorough and gives a solid walkthrough of what to do here. Now, why would you want to use something like a Trezor? And this is for uh, you beginners out there that are unsure about what this actually does, how it functions and why you might want to use it. Um, and the reason is, is that what an actual wallet is, is actually it's a key to your account and the keys are everything. Anybody who holds that key can access your funds. So when you have a wallet on a phone or on a computer and the keys to that wallet reside on that device, well that's an internet connected device. And feasibly somebody could get into, hack into your computer or your phone and then access those keys and use your keys to send funds out to a wallet which they control. Um, with something like a Trezor or any hardware wallet typically, uh, the keys actually reside on this device and when you plug it into a computer or a phone or something else that is internet connected, well, this device never actually gives the keys to your account away to the computer. So in this instance, when we were sending a transaction, what the Trezor is really doing is it's proving that it holds the keys to those account, uh, to that account, and allows me to send money without ever giving a copy of the key to the computer. So nobody that has perhaps compromised com my computer could actually see and make a copy of the key because it never leaves this device. Um, so that is the extra security added by hardware wallets and that's why you might want to consider grabbing something like this, uh, especially if you're holding any amount of cryptocurrency that you are afraid of losing. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to hit like and subscribe, drop a tip if you're able to, and share this video. Also, if you'd like to pick yourself up a Model T, you can click the link down below to grab yourself one. I will see you guys next time on the BTC Sessions.